Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm taking a look at the Lemon DSMP 6 channel receiver. This is the model LM0019S. And I'm going to show you how to bind it to the Radio Master TX16S. Hey, before I get into the video, I have to let you know this video is sponsored by Altitude Hobbies. It wasn't about two weeks ago that I got an email from Altitude Hobbies announcing that they were now carrying the Lemon line receivers. And as luck would have it, I had already ordered Lemon receiver from Lemon directly. And they replied and said, hey, we really don't know due to the virus how long it's going to take us to get inventory out the door. So you might want to, it could be months. <laughs> And I said, well, why don't you go ahead and cancel the order and I'll see if I can find a local retailer. And not too long after that, Altitude put out an announcement that they were carrying them. So I contacted Altitude and told them I'd been conducting a series of TX16S videos and I was really interested in the Lemon receivers because they're another really well thought of low cost option that works with the TX16S. So I asked if they'd be interested in sponsoring a video and they said, yep, absolutely. And they sent me this little Lemon DSMP six channel receiver. So if you're in the market for Lemon receivers, they now carry a full line of Lemon receivers. And those are not always easy to get, by the way, but they've got a full line and they're ready to ship them out. This little Lemon DSMP six channel is only $16, 16 bucks. So definitely check out to do the hobbies out. They're a good online hobby shop. They get stuff out fast and they have a pretty good stock of those awesome Leopard motors. Now they're carrying a line of batteries and now the lemon receiver. So they've got some pretty cool stuff. Make sure you pay them a visit. Anyway, this lemon looks to fit the bill. Let's take a closer look. There's not a whole lot to write home about on this receiver, basic six channel. It's a tiny little thing and this is perfect for a basic park fly airplane. Just what you want. They do have a couple of different iterations of this receiver. This is a top pin setup, but they do have an end pin and no pin setup if you're interested in that as well. And then also in the box, they give you some double mounted, double sided mounting tape to get the receiver mounted on your plane where you want it. And then there's a little plastic case that once you get everything set up and worked out, you can apply this if you want to, or if you don't, you don't have to. And then of course they give you a little bind plug. All right, let's take a real close look at the circuit board and then we'll bind the radio. The pins are all labeled. The top row is B1, that's for your bind plug, and probably would support an external BEC if you choose to use one while you're flying. And then it follows T-A-E-R, so throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. And then the last two are gear and aux. That's a really strange concept from a FR Sky guy because in Fursky world, we didn't label things like that. So it's a very foreign concept to me to have labels like that on channels. To me, they're just channels. So I don't know why we insist on putting labels on them. It's just foreign to me. But anyway, notice there's a UFL connector for the antenna and there's nothing holding that on other than the clamping force of that little brass connector. So before you fly, I would recommend putting a drop of hot glue on there or something to keep that from moving around. I did some up close camera work to see if I could figure out what these chips were and there is no marking. I'm not sure if they've been etched off or if that's the way they come from the factory, but these markings are not visible. They're, they're etched off there. On the back side, that's an Atmel M8 processor. That's what's responsible for doing all the processing work on the receiver. For Fursky people, you'll be used to seeing buttons like this on your receivers, but that's not for binding, that's for setting the fail safe. I'm not exactly sure what the procedure is with the bind plug, if it needs to be in or out, but look it up, that's how you set the fail safe. All of the surface mount components look like they've been soldered on well. I don't see anything there that looks alarming to me. I do want to point out that I'm using my handy little Toolkit RC M8S. And I made myself a special little power lead. This is an XT60 plug that you'll normally see on the battery. And all I did is connect the positive and negative wires that you normally find on a servo extension to the positive and negative leads on the XT60. And that way I can use my little toolkit M8 for a power supply. Don't forget that's on sale right now. There's a coupon in the description for it. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is plug the bind plug in on the top pin, just like that. It's opposite the antenna, if that helps. I've got my power already started on the M8S, so now the next thing is just to plug this into the receiver. Any of the pins will do, doesn't really matter which one. And you'll see it's going into bind mode with that red flashing light. Okay, on the radio, set the multi-module to DSM and leave this option set to auto. There are some other timing options in there, but I'd recommend just setting it to auto and letting the radio do the work. 
and make sure you set your channel range to one to six. I'm not sure why, but mine defaults to seven. And then the other thing is set it on auto detect format and then click on bind. And when you click on bind, you should see it stop blinking, then it'll slow blink, and then it'll go solid. There we go. Okay, once that's done, we can connect a servo. And I'm going to put the servo on the second set of pins, which is aileron. And there we go. You got to love protocol independence, don't you? I mean, how awesome is that? This is a DSM receiver. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a DSM compatible receiver. I've got FR Sky receivers. I've got Fly Sky receivers. And the TX16S just seems to handle the job pretty well. Now I'm going to show you guys something cool. Since you stuck around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you some bonus footage. You notice on my radio, the default firmware options are aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. The receiver is set for throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Well, if I don't like that order, I can come down here to disable channel map and click OK on that. And now watch this. I'm going to take the aileron off the second. Notice, see, it's on the second pin right there. You see that, the gap? I'm going to take it off the second pin and I'm going to realign it the way my radio is set up, which is AETR. So if I move this up to here, now I've got aileron on the first set of pins and I'll move it down to the second one so you can see the elevator work. There's the elevator. I'll put it on throttle. There's throttle. And then rudder is the last one. So by disabling that channel map, you can have this receiver conform to your outputs. And what's really happening is the transmitter is doing the mixing and the magic inside so you don't have to worry about it. And then the last thing I'll show you real quick is that it is a six channel receiver. On my radio, my SC switch up here is mapped to channel six. So I'm just gonna flip that and you can see the servo working on channel six. All right, there you go. That's how you bind a Lemon DSMP six channel receiver to the TX16S. Remember, this is the model LM0019S. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already. If you are a subscriber, keep up the great work. I appreciate your comments and engagement. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.